Karen and Fatima make amends. Zach might have a problem with the police. And Andy has really moved on from Gary. What's good, y'all? It's your good sister Erica Vane coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another sister's video. And in this video, we are talking about season six, episode 15, I believe, if I got it right. <laughs> If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my sister's content and conversations. And without further ado, let's break down this episode. So I think I'm going to go by characters in this particular breakdown because we had quite a few scenes for various characters that really shape how I feel about them with the episode. And I'm going to go ahead and start at the top, right? Figuratively, I will say, with Fatima. <laughs> because we get a run-in with Karen at the top of the episode. Zach and Fatima are at the grocery store getting food and things that they need now that they have Michael in their possession, in their custody, if you will. And they run into Karen. And this is where they left off in the previous episode and where they pick up in this episode. It does become an awkward confrontation, but there's not a lot of yelling. There's not a lot of screaming. It's definitely less tense than when Fatima walked to behind into Karen's house. Now, what I will say, again, this part is talking about Fatima. I do think that Karen should have just let it go. This wasn't necessarily the time. However, there's still bad blood, if you will. There's still tensions. Emotions are still running high. And this is a very interesting moment to basically catch your ex and his new girl in. Cool. I wasn't fully struggling or didn't have a problem with Fatima in the grocery store scene. I think that she's going out of her way and doing what she has been doing and supporting Zach as much as she possibly can showing up as a, the, like a definition picture, perfect ride or die. Um, to me, the best part about the grocery store scene is when Zach actually goes to take Michael to the car and Fatima and Karen are actually able to talk. And then she's able to tell Karen like, Girl, he's struggling with this, this, and this. And it basically is something that, like, sons Karen because you are kicking up dust, got an attitude about us, and meanwhile, this little boy is struggling with being neglected, being malnourished, possibly being abused. They're a bigger fish to fry. And that's basically what Fatima goes ahead and, like, lets Karen know. Again, I think that the whole entire grocery store scene was awkward. I think that everybody could have handled it better. However, I'm not mad at how Fatima handled it any of the things that happened and I'm really glad for the information that she did reveal to Karen because that ultimately prompts Karen to come and bring a car seat as well as additional kid stuff to the duplex and I was just like I wonder if people gonna have a problem with Karen showing up at the duplex now every time you turn around people are pissed because oh Karen needs to stay her behind home she needs to stay away from there but then when she's coming to be a good human to show up and to apologize I wonder if it's crickets in the comment section right Karen and Fatima have such an endearing moment. And honestly, it takes me back to, I believe, like season three. I want to say it just reminded me of the moment that they had outside of Andy's wedding when Gary sprung that on her. However, in that moment, Fatima was very apologetic and was like, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. And Karen had a little bit of like interest in energy. So I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say this. They truly have a very amicable interaction at the door of this duplex. Fatima invites her in. She says no. She also reveals a little bit like she's not ready to come in and she wants to get to the place where she can look at Zach and be okay. And it's like all of that you can understand. So much so that Fatima actually says, I understand. They both say that they're not mad at each other. They don't hate each other. And you feel like in this moment after Karen walks away that we have finally turned over a new leaf with these girls, which is why when we get to the law firm the next day, I'm very disappointed in Fatima now I know I just skipped over the dry ass rice that she cooked I just skipped over her and Zach both drinking wine which you get to see her pour it but you don't actually get to see them drink it and this is only a call out for me not because she can't have wine but if she's supposed to be pregnant why is she actively intentionally drinking still if you want to check out my is Fatima pregnant video I'll tag it in the caption I was frustrated with Fatima having a conversation with Andy that was completely void of the amicable interaction that Karen and her had like 
the fact that Karen was able to have a conversation with Andy and actually allude to the entirety of the circumstance of what went down the night before, both the grocery store and her showing up at their house. And then when Fatima has a conversation, she's only alluding to Karen being bipolar and how they need to go ahead and get her checked. And honestly, I'm a little less frustrated than I was right after the episode when we talked about this on Our Sisters Keeper. If you haven't seen it yet, Our Sisters Keeper is the live after show and podcast that I host with Allie Nick. And we talk about sisters right after each episode on Erica Vane TV Live. So if you would like to chit chat and talk about the episode as soon as it goes off, then be sure to check that out on Wednesdays on my channel. It felt really disheartening initially, but when I went back to go and rewatch it, it also feels like Fatima is using the conversation about Karen or the like trying to play Karen as a deflection because the way they actually get there, Andy asks, so we're going to talk about the baby, Zach's child. And she's like, oh, you must have talked to Karen. Speaking of Karen, and then you go into this whole little narrative to create and make it seem like she's bipolar and you never really answered Andy's initial question. So now I'm kind of like, okay, girl, maybe you're not trying to be as shady as I think that you're trying to be and you're just trying to deflect and you're trying to keep Andy out of Zach's business. But then after that, you also need her to give you an extra 30 minutes so that you can meet with Zach and the lawyer here at the law firm. So it's like, eh, I'm not even going to be off your ass all the way. Because again, to me, it's very disingenuous to have the interaction that you have and then have a positive one. Tell Karen that you actually understand that you get it, that you empathize and that you don't dislike her only to come in and still perpetuate the same energy that has been ha happening between y'all to Andy. And then on top of that, you don't even take into account Andy's friendship. This is Andy's supposed best friend. And you're perfectly fine with diagnosing her with some type of mental illness because of the interactions that y'all have had completely like almost not taking accountability for your particular part in it because whether y'all want to understand it or not, the girl came through Karen's front damn door, uninvited and unannounced. That deserved a little bit of rah-rah energy. Point blank period. Regardless of how y'all feel like Karen has been acting, that deserved some rah-rah energy. So I'm really disappointed in Fatima by the end of the episode because in the moment that you could tell Andy, like, okay, Karen been getting on my damn nerves. Karen been doing too much, but she also did this. You choose not to, which to me tells me on some level, you are still perpetuating the drama and you're perpetuating the petty and you're perfectly fine with keeping Andy in a position where she's going to continue to betray her friend because whether y'all want to understand this or not, Andy is not a good friend. She's not a good friend to Karen and she's barely a friend to Fatima, but that's also has to do with her as a character. And I talk about that a little bit more on my channel. So if you haven't seen it already, get into it. But yeah, I don't like that. Fatima has continuously devolved as each season goes on. And in addition to watching her sacrifice herself for the relationship with Zach, it's really frustrating watching a woman who I thought was mature and positive and progressive and just a little bit above where we got to meet the original sisters turn out to just be one of them and or below. Because low key, She's a, she aspires to be an Andy. And for all intents and purposes, at least for me and what I'm seeing right now, she's definitely giving Andy 2.0 as a character. And it's unfortunate. And I, can, and I hate episodes that basically reaffirm that for me because I don't want her to be that. I want Fatima to be more. And for some reason, Tyler keeps finding a way to make her less. But we're going to move on. Let's talk about Karen. So Karen has a little bit of energy, a little bit of rah-rah energy at the grocery store. She's caught off guard with seeing Michael and then also seeing Zach and Fatima <laughs> with Michael. Um, again, I don't think that it was appropriate or the time to actually press the issue. However, feelings is going to feel in and sometimes you make mistakes and you do things. She realizes this after she, you know, is clued into Michael's situation and she brings the toys. And I just thought that this was so big and beautiful of her to do in addition to trying to sew into this boy and trying to show up to the, for this boy Zach's other child from some other woman who she had no idea about and don't interact with at all but because she cares
cares one about children and two about Zach and knowing what Zach's history is she even mentions this she goes out of her way to bring a car seat and toys and other things that a child would need that goes to show all of the Karen naysayers that she is not the evil witch of the west that y'all asses want to make her out to be cut it out I love this moment. I think this was my favorite scene of the mo of the episode with her talking to Fatima and them being able to actually have that connection. I have said this numerous times. I probably will have to say it m more times moving forward. But Karen and Fatima are very much so alike when it comes to character makeup and character structure. Previously, before we got these few seasons of Fatima, but definitely before we got Fatima, I used to say that Karen and Fatima are literally the same woman. They are just at different stages in life. I always have felt like Fatima has already gone through the stage of love and loss that Karen did. And she did so with Ian, which is how she was able to be a little bit more mature. Now, this Zach relationship is putting her through the ringer and also pulling some things out of her when it comes to competing and conflicting with with Karen as well as other women. But for the most part, I used to say that I really felt like Fatima and Karen was so much alike. She just happened to be further along in the timeline a little bit ahead. So it makes sense that they can actually connect the way they do. It makes sense that Karen knows in her heart of hearts that she doesn't actually hate Fatima. I think it would be so much easier for Karen in this moment if Zach would have gotten with a trash woman. But because she knows that Fatima's actually solid, Fatima can actually hold him down, Fatima can actually support him, Fatima can actually get him to rise to the occasion to continue to be better and kind of like pick up where she left off and push this man forward I think that that also still stirs with her a little bit too and it's just not it's not easy it's not easy to walk away from something that you believed in all your heart was the thing for you was the person for you and have a picture of what your life was going to be and then to now see that picture play out in real life and you not be nowhere near it or a part of it that is not easy. It is definitely a struggle. And again, it just, it makes this scene with Fatima and Karen even more impactful, just having all of that context. Now, when we go to the penthouse and Karen is going to go talk to Andy, I hate it. I hate Andy having an additional attitude because, um, ma'am, you got your apology last night trying to backpedal and have Karen continuously apologize when you barely apologize to her, when you have been betraying her and backstabbing her this entire time, it's wild to me. You consistently share information that with Fatima about Karen and don't do the vice versa for Karen, which I don't think that you should be sharing either of these women's business with either of these women, but you consistently do that. And then you consistently allow Fatima to take cheap shots and talk shit about Karen to your face. And this is supposed to be your best friend, your best friend that you think is supposed to be groveling up in this goofy ass penthouse. That is your penthouse. Now it's your penthouse. Now, girl, I don't know if the Punani giving the Punani to Gary was worth this goofy ass penthouse. Andy, <sighs> I feel like I have like said this ad nauseum by now, but like Andy has got to be one of the most, one of the biggest disappointments. But then I also have to check myself with like, girl, how much did you really expect out of her? She's a bird and she gives bird brain at pretty much every turn. I just wish she would find it in her heart, find it in her spirit to be a good friend 25% of the time. To not be so self-centered 25% of the time. To not be so male identified 25% of the time. To do something other than worry about your looks in a dollar 25% of the time. Because while you have been able to maintain these relationships within this girl group, it's only because they don't be on your ass enough. And yes, in this moment, Karen is going to get seed money to be able to fix her salon from... Andy, and it's clear, Andy is the financial friend. She's not the emotionally stable friend. She's not the emotionally intelligent friend. She's not the mentally their friend. She is the financial friend. Do I want Karen to take the money from her? No, I would much rather you take it from Aaron. At least there would be clear boundaries. At least there would be clear communication and understanding. At least there wouldn't be a behind your back playing like your best friend and yucking it up in her damn office with your number one app. You ain't got to worry about that with Aaron. For all intents and purposes, I would much rather you even call Zach up and say, hey, can you write a new check? Because Andy, I think, is the... Yes, she gave money for your initial start in the salon, but Andy and Karen are growing apart as people. And intertwining in this way when they can't even stay on the same accord about basic stuff, 
You know that Zach is ripping and running around Atlanta over a picture that Fatima showed him that you know about, and you're not going to warn me so that my man and, and I get accosted, assaulted, if you will, by Zachary in this restaurant, and you knew this was coming, you, you said boo? But Fatima can call you and you tell her exactly where I'm at because you know that's where Zach is heading? You yeah, know, Andy's never beaten a bad friend charges, and I don't give a damn how much money she gives Karen for the salon. Period. In other disappointing news, Daniela. Girl, if you don't want to be with Preston, just say that. If you feel insecure in a relationship with Preston, just say that. If you want to go ahead and try Tony stalking ass out, just say that. Because what is this hemming and hawing and ducking and dodging that you're doing up in your own house behind Preston? You smiling and giggling and keep keying into your phone and then you act and then you want to pretend like he can't see, can't tell, can't feel your energy. The next morning when he asks you straight up, like, what is going on? I feel like something is off. You want to gaslight him? Weren't you the same one talking about all he did was gaslight you? Weren't you the same one talking about he don't know how to date black women? Weren't you the same one talking about he don't know how to, to communicate? Weren't you the same one talking, like, it makes absolutely no sense. And I'm so disappointed in that you running around here hollering about girlfriend energy and I'm committed. Meanwhile, it took nothing but a stalker and a bus pass to have you swooning and like, oh my God, maybe I should reconsider. One, you shouldn't be in this relationship anyway because Mindy still got that damn ring on her finger. But if you're going to do it, then go ahead and do it. Don't be running around here saying that you one thing and acting another. That is my biggest problem with Daniela as a character because why she want to play big and bad to everybody else and she want to tell everybody the truth and I'm going to tell it like it is and you already know. Meanwhile, you're living in a big ass delusional lie and not the kind of good delusional. Not the good delusional that help you manifest your dreams. The dumb ass delusional that helps you sacrifice and sabotage your whole life for nothing. It's wild to me, Daniela, how you're navigating. And if you don't want the boy in your house, don't have a boy in your house. Like, all of this is taking place with Daniela and Preston. And he literally don't have to be there because we had to watch over the course of a season. You continuously sh on this man only to randomly decide, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. Because of why? All the while never processing your trauma after you've been beaten and abused by multiple men. Tala. I can't. And with that said, y'all, I think that that's pretty much it. That is my breakdown. Let me know what you thought about the episode in the comment section down below. Let's go ahead and have a conversation. I already know some of y'all going to feel a way about my feelings. All you got to do is keep it respectful and we can go ahead and converse. It's your good sis you love to talk TV with. Be sure to check out my episode 16 preview, which is also up right now. And I'll see you there.